I'm going to show you how to save thousands of dollars on your favorite high-end home accessories by DIYing versus buying. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com and I have over 30 high-end home hacks to share with you today that are going to save you a ton of money. And let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into the very first idea. I'm not sure how a planter can be $999, but apparently you can find that at Pottery Barn. We're going to assume we're going to make the smallest sized one, which retails for $1.99 at Pottery Barn, but we're going to grab one of these planters that's only $1.25 from Dollar Tree and give it a similar look. So we are going to head into the craft room and grab out some paint. So this is the color plaster. It's the chalk paint. I love this stuff. It sticks to everything. And if you seal it, you can put this outdoors and it will be weather safe. So as you can see in the original, it has a kind of creamy outside color. And then the inside is that terracotta pot color. So I'm actually making three of these so I can make them for my front porch and still it's going to be a fraction of the cost. So to get that terracotta color, we are mixing some orange and just a tiny bit of red chalk paint together. And we're going to paint that to the inside of the pot and along the top rim. So actually on these Dollar Tree pots, there is a line on there already for you where they seamed the inside and the outside of the pot together. So that was kind of helpful. Didn't use tape or anything, just freehanded it and did my best. Once it was all dried, added some boxwood to this because it seems like Pottery Barn likes to use a lot of boxwood in their landscaping. So that's what I tried to keep similar to this one. There's three of them would have been $597. Mine with the plants under $34. I would say that is a pretty good bargain. See, just a little bit of paint. You can take something from the Dollar Tree and make it very realistic, just like the original from the higher end stores. So I hope that inspires you to look at things at Dollar Tree a little bit differently. Now I want to take you inside one of my favorite new free games called Dice Dreams. Dice Dreams is a mobile game with a recognizable board game experience. Roll the dice, attack your friends, steal coins, and build your magical kingdom. With every roll of the dice, you earn free coins to expand your kingdom and unveil new adventures. I love this game because you can play free with your friends and family. You can challenge each other to tournaments and compete for the title of Best Kingdom. And you know us crafters love our stickers and in Dice Dreams, you collect magical stickers to win big. My dog Honey would appreciate this part of the game. You can even feed your pet to level up in the game. Uncover a delightful selection of cute pets that can become your loyal companions. Feed them cookies for amazing rewards. This game never gets old as there are new challenges every day. With new events running every hour, there are new ways to play daily. Get ready for an epic time on Dice Dreams, the multiplayer social dice game that allows you to build boards, attack your friends, and even brag about your victories. And you can download Dice Dreams for free by going down to the description box and using my link, or I will have a QR code popping up on your screen. You can scan that if you're viewing on a PC. Now for the next high-end home hack, you can actually find things at other stores for a fraction of the cost that are very, very similar to the ones at the high-end stores. So keep your eyes out, just like I did for this next project. And this is what I'm talking about. So this Pottery Barn planter retails for $109, but you can find one almost exactly like it at Sam's Club for $49. So keep your eye out for these. Sometimes you can order them online, but if you see them in your store, grab them because they fly off the shelves because they are just that great of a deal. So I only picked up one of these, put one by my front door, added a beautiful fern to the inside of this, and it just looks super high end very little effort just keeping my eye open for a good find and deal to save some money so instead of $109 we only paid $49 I definitely could not afford to pay $999 for a fountain for my front yard but I sure can afford 90% off of that to create my own for my front yard so we're going to start with this giant bowl I found it at Marshall's it was only $14.99 you can find these at Hobby Lobby and also other stores just keep an eye out 
Make sure it's a good sized one. You can see I'm using my hand here as reference. And we're gonna make this look like the Pottery Bar one as much as we can. So I'm gonna use some chalk paint for this. I was hesitant to use spray paint as it's gonna have water in it. And I know that that can just kind of deteriorate over time. Whereas chalk paint is going to really stick to the sides of this metal. I'm gonna give this three coats. You can also spray it and seal it in even more to protect this, but you may have to touch it up year after year if you um, keep using it. So this is the inside. Once I got that good and coated, we're gonna flip this over to the backside and give it three more coats of that black chalk paint. So here is the matte spray that I used. I wanted to keep that chalk paint finish, which is why I'm using a matte clear spray paint. So it'll dry, it won't be glossy. It'll still kind of more look like metal and stone versus like a high gloss finish. So I did a couple coats on the back side, a couple coats on the inside, and that little planter there may look a little familiar. That is because it's the same Sam's Club one that I featured in our last idea. So I literally just took the bowl, set it on top of the planter, and then put a little bottom in there with some river stone rocks that I got from Dollar Tree, dumped those in there. And to turn this into a fountain, this is a really cool Amazon find. It has two different ways that you can power the fountain. The first way is with a solar panel, or it also has a USB hookup. So if you want it to stay on permanently, you can attach it to a power source that way. But I just do the solar powered way, saves energy, and I don't have to think about it. You just put it out in the sun and it turns on. So then we are gonna fill the bowl up with some water. And once the sun hits that solar panel, we have an instant fountain. I will definitely make sure to link this fountain down in the description box below because as I said, you can find it on Amazon and it's super affordable and I've used it a couple of years in a row and it works great. And it definitely has different spouts you can put on it to give it different fountain features. And as you saw, the retail one was $999. Ours was a fraction of that. I love using moss during the spring and summer months. These moss letters were $79 each, but if you head to the craft store, you can find these wood letters. They are super affordable. And if you catch a deal, you'll get them 40% off, which is what I do. And then head over into the floral section. This foam was, or foam, this moss was $12.99. And it's actually on a sheet, which makes it less messy and easier to work with. So for this wood letter, it came with a hanger. We're just popping that off the back. And then we can start working with the moss. So as you can see, it pulls out, it opens up, it's got a adhesive backing on it, which makes this really nice. And I was so fortunate that this moss sheet was the exact perfect size to cover this wood letter. So I only needed one package of this moss. I'll link that down below for you so you can check it out if you wanna make your own. So all I'm doing here is flipping the moss over to the back side and putting the letter upside down on it and then taking a Sharpie marker, going around the edges to trace the outline and then cutting that outline out with a pair of scissors. Pretty simple to cut this out, not too hard at all. And now we're gonna take our time and apply that moss onto this letter. You just peel that paper backing off and kind of work your way from top to bottom, peeling as you go so you don't get any of that moss accidentally stuck into the adhesive, which then you would have to glue it on, which is no fun if you don't have to. So now that we have our letter all covered with the moss, we're gonna add a hanger. So this is some burlap ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I wanted to make this as close to the original as I could, so I found a cream color to match the Pottery Barn one. I just took a length, tied a knot in it, 
added another tail to the other end and then we are going to attach it onto the back of this letter this is one of my awesome craft tool supplies it's a battery powered staple gun and brad nailer so i love having this thing it doesn't kick you don't have to use a lot of pressure to squeeze the handle it's just got a tiny little button trigger on it so it's just easy peasy you turn it off and on and it charges with a usb cable again i will link that down below because you can find that awesome thing on Amazon. So we're going to actually take this out to the front door and put it on there for display. Proudly, how cute did this turn out? That green just makes this front door pop and definitely an easy personalization on a budget. Theirs was $79. Ours was only $21. Next is this beautiful trellis. I don't think $49.50 is too bad for this, but we're gonna make our own for a heck of a lot less using some Dollar Tree items, including a canvas and some of their long barbecue skewers. So we just basically need the wood frame from this canvas. So I'm taking a razor blade, going around the outside edge and then ripping off all that canvas from it and getting rid of any of the extra staples we don't need. Now we're going to take our long barbecue skewers, bamboo skewers, and we need a four of them, one for each corner. We're gonna hot glue them into each corner and make a point at the top. To make sure these stay at the top, I'm taking a rubber band and just twisting that around them and pulling it to the top. Now we have a nice little teepee shape for our trellis. I do want to make sure that this is going to last and last and not come apart because a lot of times it gets hot here and that hot glue can melt. So I'm reinforcing the corners with some wire. I'm going to do the same thing to the top, just adding some wire around because that rubber band can also dry rot in the weather. This will secure it and keep it permanent together. Another fun feature I'm going to add to the top of this are these metal, I'm not sure what they are. They're like fence decorative pieces that I found on Amazon. I'll definitely link them down below for you because they are very, very affordable and come as a nice set. And to permanently attach this onto the top, I use some E6000 glue and just set it right down on top. To make this all come together, we're going to use some black spray paint just going over the entire thing all the surfaces even that top metal piece so we have a nice finish on it all I love this beautiful thing and can you believe we did ours for about 90% off. Theirs is $49.50. Ours only costs $5.55 to make. Beautiful and I have used it for a couple years now. Love it. You can make a ton of those for super cheap. Now we're gonna recreate this little planter frame thing. Theirs was $79, but with some Dollar Tree supplies, we are gonna make it super cheap too. I am gonna use some of these paint stir sticks that I got from Amazon. I'll link down below for you. You are gonna need a handsaw and miter box or some heavy duty scissors to cut those down and two picture frames. I'm gonna be using two that are in the size five by seven. You'll need a pencil, ruler, and a hot glue gun. So we're gonna start by measuring our frame width and then we're gonna cut our paint stir sticks down to size. And as you can see, I have the cut list popping up on your screen. You're going to need eight at eight and a half inches and two at five and a quarter inches because we're basically going to make a nice little palette sign, which is going to be the bottom of this. Then we're going to add two more to the sides to build it up to kind of create a frame and then two of the smaller pieces on the end to frame it out. All right, so now we have the base of this little planter box frame terrarium thing. I'm not even sure what it was called 
on their website, but it looked pretty and we are just recreating this the best we can, getting our picture frames ready next. We are going to take off the glass and the backing. We just need the outsides of the frame and we are going to start painting all of these with the help of some gray and white paint. So everything is going to get a coat of that gray paint first and then we'll come back in with the white and kind of dry brush, brush it on to give it a weathered look. Once that is all dry, we can put this together using some hot glue, putting the frame on its side, one on each side of the framed box at the bottom, and then connecting them at the top at a point. The original had a nice little pretty metal closure on the front. I didn't have that, but I did have these little decorative pieces from Hobby Lobby. They were gold, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this ebony rub and buff to them to make them the same color as the ones on the original. And we're gonna hot glue that on the front so we kind of get the look without it actually being super exact, but an easy way to just give this a little bit more detail. So here's how mine turned out and it's all styled now and looking pretty. If you remember back, theirs original retail price was $79. It only cost me about $10 to make mine. absolutely love these little candle holders from $24.50 to $150 each was their retail price. We're going to grab two of these cylinder vases from Dollar Tree, some frosted glass, some paint, paintbrush, and some painter's tape, and we're going to make our own for only about $2.50. How's that sound? So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our vases and we need to spray paint them with that frosted glass. I love this stuff. It's pretty magical. It looks kind of wet whenever you spray it, but once it dries, it gives you that frosted finish. I'll definitely have this link down in the description box below for you. A fun crafting um, thing to have in your craft stash. Now the originals had little wood bases on them. We're just going to make ours look like they are sitting on a wood base. So I'm using some painter's tape here and putting a circle around the bottom of each one of the vases and then taking some of this King's Gold yellow acrylic paint. I did two coats of that as the base color and then we're going to use some of this uh, traditional burnt umber acrylic paint and we're brushing that on to give this that wood green finish. So you can do one coat of that, two coats of that if you want it more dark. This is after one coat coat and this is after two coats and then once that's dry you can remove the painter's tape. And here's what they look like finished. Super pretty, especially with candles lit and turned on in there. If you remember back, theirs were up to $50 each retail. We were able to make two of these for only about $3 total. So definitely a really pretty look, but still a big savings. Now we're gonna make some of these frames. Theirs were $39.50 each. We're gonna grab a frame from Dollar Tree. You're gonna need your glue gun, some jute, and also some scissors. So their frames had sort of like a twisted metal finish on them and the best way I knew how to get that was to use this rope. So I'm just hot gluing it around the outside edge of this frame and twisting it together to get that braided woven look of the original. Once I went all the way around, I just trimmed off the end and made sure the end was held down with some hot glue. We're going to remove the inside of this frame and since the originals were gold, we're going to spray paint this whole thing with gold spray paint. So 
So since this project, I have learned that you can take a lighter and you can hit the jute very lightly and delicately and it will burn off some of the extra little pieces and scraggly pieces on the rope and make it more clean looking. I didn't do that in this, so you'll see kind of the messiness of the rope but definitely if you try that be very careful keep a fire extinguisher handy and um, you'll get more of a clean look on your rope and I still think this looks really really pretty just a little bit different than the original but still a huge savings to get a really classy pretty look $300 for a mirror? I don't think so. At least not in my world. That's that's not in my budget. So we're going to make one similar using some Dollar Tree mirrored coasters. I love these. You can find them with the candles. They have round ones too if you want to craft with those. But anyway, we're going to use the square ones. Eight of them total for this one. I also grabbed a black foam board from Dollar Tree, laid them out so I could kind of measure what size I needed, and then got to work cutting this down. The one thing I don't like about these Dollar Tree foam boards is you can see the white in the center of them, even though they have the black on the front and the back. I think if you go to a craft store, sometimes they have the foam board that's the same color on the side. So if you want to skip this set, head to the craft store and check that out. If not, you want to stay budget friendly, grab out your black paint and you just paint the sides. You just got to be careful not to get the paint on the front or the back of the paper because you will see it. But looks a lot better now that we got that painted out. We're going to actually attach these mirrors with the with this permanent double-sided tape that I will link down below for you. It's called Total Tape. It's mess-free. It's easy to put on. And we know our mirrors are not going to fall off of this. So I would probably not use hot glue here. I would use a really heavy-duty permanent adhesive because you don't obviously don't want your mirrors popping off at all. So we are going to use a dowel rod. I'm not sure what size it is. Maybe maybe a half an inch, maybe half an inch size dowel rod. And I'm just using that as a spacer so I can evenly space these out from side to side as well as top to bottom. And here's a close up look of me applying that permanent tape to the back, literally just like a permanent double sided tape with a paper or a plastic backing that you remove. And then you just stick it right on there. And once it's stuck, you are not gonna be able to move it. So keep that in mind too. Put it where you want it, push it down, and then it's stuck there for life. It's not going to come back off. So just be careful as you do that. I also want to mention too, the bottoms of these mirror coasters have little felt feet on them. You want to pull those off so that they aren't raised up and it interferes with the adhesive. So that's just another tip too. And we're going to work our way across this whole mirror, top to bottom, side to side, until we have all those mirrors attached. And look how gorgeous this turned out, all styled pretty on my mantle. Did we pay $299 for this? No, we did not. We paid $11.25. Next, we are not going to make this giant picture. We are gonna use it as inspiration because the original was $399. We're gonna make a tiny version of this using one of these wood frames from Dollar Tree. It has like a raised flower on it that you just kind of scrape off. And then we're gonna come in with some white paint and paint the whole thing out.
All right, so now that we have the frame and everything painted white, I'm coming in with the color plaster, which is more of a cream color. And we're gonna paint the inside edge of this. So that way we have kind of a little bit of a contrast between the frame and the back. Now to make that palm leaf, we're gonna use some brown paper bags. Yep, from Dollar Tree. If you don't wanna use this, you can get craft paper from the craft store, or you can also find rolls of craft paper at Dollar Tree that would work. So we're basically cutting the bottom of this paper bag off and then cutting up the side to open it up. We're gonna make the shape of this leaf kind of a big oval leaf shape from top to bottom. And then we're gonna cut that out. To get that texture of the leaf, we are going to accordion fold this paper bag back and forth. So just about maybe a quarter of an inch, fold it forward, fold it backward, and try to keep all those folds the same size, kind of angling them up to the center point and then angling them back as you go the rest of the way through the leaf. Now we need to add some adhesive to the stem part to keep that all together. And I mentioned that you can use the paper craft rolls from Dollar Tree, these ones right here. If you wanna make the bigger original version or just wanna make big giant leaves, you can do that with those bigger rolls. Still super cheap, $1.25 a roll. So now we're gonna come in with our scissors and every single one of those fold lines, we're gonna cut down, not all the way, just kind of towards the point at the bottom to give us even more texture. And then you can hot glue this down onto the frame or I still had that permanent tape out from the uh, mirror DIY. So I just used that on the back, some double-sided tape, some foam mounting tape would work here. Anything you need to just kind of get it stuck right in the center of your frame. So as I said, definitely not paying $399 for a piece of art, but I would pay $2.50, which is what this cost. Love these modern bowls and you can make them so easy. Definitely a good savings here. We're only gonna need two things from Dollar Tree. So $2.50, one, we need a bowl, and two, we need this candle holder that has a concrete base. So we don't need this metal part at the top. We're gonna take that, set it aside. Who knows, make another craft with it down the road. You know, as crafters, we don't like to get rid of stuff. So <laughs> it becomes something eventually. So I'm using that double-sided adhesive tape to attach the concrete onto the bottom of the ceramic bowl. If you wanted to, you could use E6000 or hot glue here too. Hot glue is probably not gonna be as permanent though. So sometimes it's worth it to add some heavy duty constructed adhesive to know you're gonna get a permanent fix. So I am just peeling off the paper plastic backing of this double-sided tape and then putting the ceramic candle holder onto the bottom of the bowl. I like this stuff because there's no wait time. It just sticks and you're good to go, ready to move on to the next step. And you can see this stuff is heavy duty. Again, I'll link it down below for you. Now it's time to paint. So I decided I was gonna use chalk paint because usually chalk paint works for anything and everything. And since we have ceramic and we have the concrete on this. I thought I was safe, but it was driving me crazy the finish this bowl was giving me. So we headed outside, grabbed the chalkboard paint for this, which is basically just black chalk paint, and got so much better coverage. So always spray paint if you can, because it'll save you time. You're gonna get a nice finish. I love spray paint, and I love that it's finally spray paint season around here. Has to be at least 55 degrees and then you can spray paint pretty good outside. So here is what it looks like finished. Again, $2.50 versus $50. So these trays were on clearance for $78.99. Obviously they're gonna be bigger in size and probably nicer quality, but you can't find these cute little mini trays at Dollar Tree. So you can get a very similar look, not as big, but you can still get a really nice look. And these make really great gifts or a cute little thing to put. Um, on your vanity or on your hubby's side of the bed, your companion side of the bed, spouse, friend, 
mom, anybody. So I am just taking some of this traditional burnt umber acrylic paint, painting it onto the side of the tray and then taking a baby wipe over it and look what happens like magic. All of the beautiful wood tones and streaks in the wood come shining through. So you get a uh, wood stained look in half the time because this dries super quick. You don't have to wait for an oil-based paint to dry overnight. You can get on with your project. So I basically just cut out a letter with my vinyl cutter and weeded out the letter so we can use it as a stencil and then grab some metallic gold paint to paint this monogram onto the center. Easy peasy and looks really cute, right? Well, we're gonna give this a little bit more touch of high end with some felt on the bottom. So I added some of that double-sided tape onto the felt, cut that out and then cut them into little pieces and put them onto the four corners of the tray. Just makes it nicer so that way it protects your countertops or your vanity top. Just makes for a really nice finished project and product, especially if you're gonna be giving this away as a gift. I fell in love with this beautiful pumpkin wreath, but I knew I could make it cheaper using Dollar Tree supplies. And I was also very, very fortunate to be able to take this project onto our local morning show called Show Me St. Louis and share this with the St. Louis area, made some really great memories and shared this fun project. So now I get to share it with you. So what you're gonna need are a bunch of these bags of pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I know sometimes it's hard to find that many. It took eight bags, but you're also gonna need one of these wire form wreaths and another tip is you can mix and match the different textures that they have of these pumpkins so i'm using burlap and the uh the velvet ones yes that's the word velvet ones but they had leather too so you can kind of do a combination of two or all three whatever you can find and these pumpkins also come with little clips on the bottom so it, it makes it so quick so easy mess free to just clip these pumpkins right around your wreath but there is a better way to do this versus just throwing these on there and clipping them everywhere so i would suggest doing your center row of pumpkins first make this row look really really nice this is what's your going to see right in front so having a nice center of this is going to make it look better in the end so i went all the way around the center first and then we're going to start working on the inside edge so we don't see those wires all the way around this so i did the burlap as my center layer and then for the inside and the outside i did the velvet pumpkin so as you can see i'm clipping from the top down onto the countertop and I'm actually trying to close up any gaps I see as I work my way around. Looking good, right? So we got two rows. Now we need to work on the outside row. We're gonna do the same thing as the inside row using those velvet pumpkins and clipping from the top down. But this time we're gonna try and fill in the gaps. So between every pumpkin, there's a little space. That's where I am putting the outside pumpkins. Stinking cute, right? And it was so easy. It doesn't take very long at all. You don't need any glue, adhesive, and then you can hang it on your front door. Or I had this 10 metal piece from Hobby Lobby a forever ago that I painted black and then just hung it on the front, tied it on with a little piece of fishing line so you didn't really see it, but it was hanging on the back side there, up and over the back side. And then we have a centered, beautiful fall wreath.
All right, so here's a great pro tip. These leaf branches at Pottery Barn were $59 each retail, but if you head to Dollar Tree, sometimes you can find things that are already made very similar, including these stems that were gorgeous. And here's another pro tip. If you take the listing photo and kind of set up your display to where it looks very similar to theirs, you're gonna get obviously a similar look too. So I set up two of the vases that I had, a candle and a couple books, the way they had it in the photo, and then took those apart are those Dollar Tree stems. And unfortunately, they didn't have enough of just the white ones, so I sprinkled in some of the pretty orange ones for fall to still get a similar look. But if you can find exactly what they have at a fraction of the cost, you will still get the look, but I'll save a bundle doing it that way versus spending the higher end prices for the Pottery Barn Originals. Here's another tip too. When you are floral arranging, you want your stems at varying heights. So these were easy enough to just fold the bottoms over a little bit. And what that does is it's going to give you more of a natural look and also fill in some of those gaps and holes you start seeing at the base of your vase. And it kind of fills in some of those holes. So really easy to do. And then obviously you just kind of have your display ready to go. I love lighting my candles in my home. I found this one on Amazon and I will link it down below for for you. It is so much cheaper than buying them at the high-end retail stores and you just have a beautiful fall display. Now obviously if it's not fall you can also change these stems out to ones that are colors or flowers that match more of that season. I love being able to find things around my house that I already have and still get a really chic look and save a bundle doing it just using some Dollar Tree stems. Nope, next we're gonna do a DIY. Love these cute little pumpkin glasses. Super affordable if you head to Dollar Tree, grab some of their clear glasses and then head to Amazon or the craft store and grab yourself some glass paint. I will definitely link the ones that I'm using down below and we're just gonna add some cute little pumpkins on to these glasses. Now this is definitely beginner friendly. All you have to do is take a paintbrush. After you shake up your paints, we're gonna paint these little pumpkins on there. And it's so easy to do. You just make three ovals. So start with one oval in the center and then add two more, one on each side. And it's gonna give you a real simple pumpkin shape. The more paint that you add on here, the more opaque of a color that you're going to get. You definitely wanna add those little ribs of the pumpkins on there too, to give it more definition. And then what you'll do is just take your green paint and add some little stems to the top. And here is a close up look of what those little pumpkins are looking like. Very, very cute. Go ahead and work your way the rest of the way around your glass. Once you have them all painted, you'll let them sit and dry for 24 hours and then you'll pop them into the oven for 30 minutes at 280 degrees and that will set the paint so they are now washable. Not dishwasher safe, but you can hand wash these. I actually made some really cute ones with hearts on them for Valentine's Day and they have lasted and lasted too. So highly recommend this. But if you use a different glass paint than I did, you definitely want to read the directions on that as it may be a little bit different. Here's another Dollar Tree find that is super high end, but also super affordable. Only $1.25 for these ribbed glasses. These are so incredibly trendy right now. I couldn't believe I found these because usually you find these in the high end stores like Pottery Barn. This is one that is similar. A set of four is almost $70. So great find here. Of course, you can use them for glasses, for drinking glasses, or you can use them to decorate with too.
These make beautiful candle holders too. So these are battery powered candles that I will link down below for you. I found them on Amazon and they come with a remote so you can turn them off and on easily or set them on a timer so they turn off and on without even have to, having to think about it. But all you have to do is put your little candles into these glasses and the ribbing on the glasses makes for a beautiful glow and atmosphere with these glasses. Love it so much, really, really pretty really classy looking and a really easy DIY. Now we're going to DIY this brass leaf little trinket holder for a fraction of the cost. Normally they are almost $30 each, but we're going to make ours for only a couple dollars with the help of some air dry clay. I will link this down below for you. I got it off of Amazon. You can find it at craft stores too. And Dollar Tree does have air dry clay, but it's that terracotta color. So if you don't mind that color, grab the one from Dollar Tree, but they do like to crack a lot once they dry. So this is kind of just a better option all the way around. You cut off a section from the big block and then knead it till it's warm and then use a rolling pin to roll it out flat. For the leaf, I just Googled leaf silhouette, found one that I liked and then sized it and scaled it to the size I wanted and then printed it out. So I do have this template that I will link down below for you totally free. It'll save you some time. Head down to that link and download it. And then you just cut it out, lay it on top of your air dry clay, and then use some type of object to score it and cut this out. I just used a weeding tool and a little plastic knife that I had. So whatever you have on hand, just be careful not to cut up your work surface or put something down if you have a pointy tool that could damage your surface. So once we get this all cut out, we're gonna take our finger and just run it around the edges so it smooths it out. Now we want to give this a kind of 3D look like the original Pottery Barn one. So this is a bubble glass vase from Dollar Tree and I just took that leaf and laid it over it and kind of bent the edges gently around it so it conformed the shape of that vase. We're also going to add a little stem onto this leaf, just rolled up some excess um, of the clay and then attached it on there like the original. If you need to, you can take a little bit of water and rub that onto it and it will help that clay stick on. You can also rub it around the edges of your leaf to smooth them out more. I did, after the fact, think, you know what, I'm going to cover up that vase to make sure it doesn't stick onto the glass. So I put some saran wrap onto the vase first and then laid the leaf on there to dry, let it sit until the next day, and then came back and this is what it looked like. And it popped easily off of that saran wrapped vase. And we can see here, we have that beautiful shaped leaf and now we need to give it the look of brass. So we're gonna take it outside first spray it with a couple coats of this matte black spray paint. Here's what it looks like once it's dried. And to give it that brass look, I found this metallic gilding paste on Amazon and I will link it down below for you. It's really going to give our leaf more of a uh, metal finish versus one that looks like clay. You can also see that it comes with a, a sponge in the handle that you can use, but I recommend just using a foam paintbrush here to get over and down into all the crevices and make sure to get all those edges. So you basically just lightly paint this on. You don't want too much of the gilding paste on your paintbrush and it goes on really, really easily. You just wanna make sure not to push to too hard and break off any of those leaves. So here is the back side looking beautiful, right? We're going to flip it over to the front side now and just to finish it off.
Look at this beautiful leave. It turned out so good, so perfect. It was super easy to do. Looks really nice in your fall decor. You can add little trinkets in here, use it for a candle holder. You could put your keys in it if you want to put it on an entryway table. It just has a really classy, beautiful look and about 90% off of the Pottery Barn original one. That was $30. This one's probably closer to about $3. All right, so we see these wheat bundles in different stores and home decor stores. This one retails for $79. I'm not sure why, but we're gonna grab one of these vases from Dollar Tree and we're gonna use it as kind of a placeholder so we don't have to use so much wheat to get that full look. So I found my wheat on Amazon. I'll link it down below for you, but again, you can find these in craft stores in their floral section. We're gonna take some double-sided tape and put it onto the vase on the bottom half of it and then we're gonna start laying the wheat in a single row all the way around it. A tip here is to put your vase down on your countertop and then start adding the wheat and so that it, it will touch the bottom of your countertop and it will make everything even. That way, if you have any that are like sticking out too far on the bottom, your vase will sit flat this way and everything will be nice and even. So you're going to work your way all the way around this vase until you have it completely full and covered. As you can see, we have a nice full look at the top and we kind of get that look at the bottom like we have a big bunch of wheat when we really don't. So we're gonna take a rubber band here and add it on there so our wheat doesn't come off. Next up is the jute detail. Now I kind of went rogue here and I just started wrapping the middle of this wheat bundle with it right down the middle, which you can absolutely do if that's the look you're going for. And then I realized the original actually had uh, jute on the top and the bottom, which I actually liked that look a lot more. So I decided to take this off and start over and then just wrapped the top and the bottom with a few rows of that jute, which I actually really like this look a little bit better. It's not a big change, but I do think it has a little bit more of a classy high-end look versus just wrapped around the center, but totally up to you how you wanted to do this. I thought this was really pretty. Sat in the corner of my kitchen with a cookbook and some fall accessories. Next up is this serving platter. I thought these were beautiful. I actually really like to buy these and have these, the original ones, but I'm gonna show you how to make them um, so much more affordably using these plastic trays from Dollar Tree. We're gonna gussy them up so they look just like the ones from Pottery Barn. So the first thing we need to do is coat them with this chiffon cream spray paint that I'll link down below for you. I love this stuff. It is a chalk paint, so it sticks to plastic and all kinds of different surfaces really nicely, really easily. So we gave it a couple coats on the backside, let that dry, flipped it over, and gave it a couple more coats on the front. So the Pottery Barn platters had some detail kind of on them on the raised areas. So we're gonna try to recreate that with the help of some orange chalk paint. And then we're gonna darken this up with just a little bit of brown to give this more of a darker tone. Mixed those two paints together. And then we're gonna take a paintbrush and just go around the edges, the outside edges of this leaf, and then take a smaller paintbrush and add some details in the center. And it was too white for me, so I came in and added even more color, just dry brushed it onto the center. And then it was too much orange for me, so I took it back outside and hit it with the spray paint a little bit to tone down that orange paint, which gave me a beautiful finish in the end. Another cute little addition to your fall decor, you can put a candle in there, put your keys in there, put a little thing of beads hanging off the side in there to make it cute and a little nice vignette with some books. And here is little honey making a little cameo. She is just the cutest, is she not? And of course, so is this tray. 
So I love the leaf, but Dollar Tree also has these really cute plastic pumpkin trays. So I thought we would do the same technique here and see what it would turn out like. So here is the pumpkin sprayed with that cream spray paint coming in with that darker toned orange paint and going over those raised areas and the edges. And then we are going to just hit this with some more spray paint, tone it down. And again, it turns out so, so pretty. Very classy look by using a Dollar Tree plastic tray. Now for this final look, I actually had some vase filler that I put in there along with some of these pumpkins that are from Dollar Tree. They might look familiar from our pumpkin wreath we made earlier. Very cute way to turn some everyday uh, vase filler into ones for fall. Now moving from fall to Halloween, I was nearly born on Halloween. I was born the day before, so I love Halloween. The cutesy stuff though, but I thought Pottery Barn had some really cute Halloween decorations I wanted to try and recreate. So I found these hanging candles. $99 for candles seemed crazy to me, especially when I knew Amazon had some battery powered candles for far cheaper and we could just use our Cricut machine and cut out some bat silhouettes to attach to them and get a very, very similar look. So here I am just in my Cricut program, um, making some small bats, scaling them to size and then sending them over to my Cricut machine to cut out, just using some regular black cardstock for this. If you do not have a Cricut machine, all you have to do is print out some bat silhouettes with your computer and then use your scissors and cut them out. That absolutely works too. I just love the Cricut machine because number one, easy, two, quick, three, you're going to get a much more professional kind of finished look once they're done cutting out. And then once the machine was done cutting these out for me, I just pulled them right off the mat and we're going to start adding them to our candles. Another option here is Dollar Tree actually has these LED emergency candles. So you put batteries in them and you twist the bottom and they turn on. They also have this pack of six of emergency real candles. So if you want that look, there's that option. Or the route I went were these Amazon battery powered candles that come with a remote. So you can literally just hit a button and they all turn off and on at the same time. So it's kind of the lazy way to do it, but it's also kind of a more efficient way to do it too. And they're still super affordable. I'll link them down below for you. So once we get all the batteries into our candles, you can see here, they also have different settings on them. So you can make them brighter or dimmer. And then we're just using some hot glue to glue our little bat silhouettes onto the front of these candles. So of course we want these candles to hang and kind of look eerie. So we're going to use some of this fishing line to just tie onto the actual candle parts, the top part of the candles, and then you can hang them. So I just hung mine from my mantle from my fireplace and then used my remote control to turn them off and on. They look super cute, much more affordable than the Pottery Barn ones and ones that we can keep and use year after year. This is probably my favorite Halloween project from last year. They are Halloween yard stakes retail for $99. We're actually going to grab these flexible cutting mats from Dollar Tree and we are going to cut out the shapes that are going to look like metal when we're done instead of plastic. Did you know you can actually cut these with your Cricut machine? You absolutely can. You don't even need the Cricut, Cricut maker. I have a Explore Air 3, which I highly recommend and I will link it down below for you. I'm taking my my cutting mat. I cut it down a little bit because it was too big for my cutting mat. And we are going to go into Cricut Design Space and find similar silhouette shapes that they had in there. And we're going to put them on our mat, scale them down to size, and then we're going to send them over to the machine. Now I do have a Cricut profile, which you can click the link down in the description box below. I have these designs already scaled down to size for you. So all you have to do is go to my profile find that project. It will load it into your Cricut's design space scaled for you. You just hit send to your 
printer or to your Cricut machine, hit make, and then go ahead and send it to your machine and pick a mat that you're gonna be cutting it on. So you just wanna make sure that these are all good to go. And for the settings, you need to click mat board. That is going to be a thick material. And we are also going to ha have our pressure set to more before loading it into the machine and letting it do its thing. Now, I know I talked a lot about how to do this on a Cricut machine, but if you don't have a Cricut machine, find a silhouette shape on Google, print it out, lay it on, cut it out, and then lay it on your mat and cut it out with scissors. So you don't have to have a Cricut machine to do these projects, but if you have a Cricut machine, obviously you wanna utilize it like I do to get these really easy cutouts in a quick amount of time. So here are those cutting mats cut out into Halloween shapes. We are gonna turn these into yard stakes using some bamboo skewers. So these are the long ones from Dollar Tree. They come in a set of 12, so you can make a ton of these super duper cheap. And we're actually gonna use some super glue here to glue these onto the back and then use some tape to hold this down. That's gonna reinforce it until that glue has some time to set up. So this cat and the bat, I was worried about the wings and the tail kind of slumping over in any kind of warm weather. So I'm reinforcing that with some more of these bamboo skewers, just gluing that onto the back of the tail so that way it stays standing up. The pumpkin was pretty easy, just straight down the center. And then as you can see the bat, adding that longer one to the center and then smaller ones onto the wings so they don't warp. Now we're headed outside and we are going to spray paint these entire things with some matte black spray paint. We are gonna do two coats on the back side, let it dry, flip it over and do two coats on the front side. And as you'll see, these turn out looking just like black metal and the original Pottery Barn ones. But honestly, these were only probably a dollar each to make maybe less than that so super duper affordable probably not good to use year after year you'd probably have to make these um each year just because the bamboo kind of warps over time and they are plastic so if you have a lot of heat in your area they do tend to kind of wilt a little bit but i left these up the entire month of october and they held up so i was pretty happy with this project this ghost pillow went viral last year, $85.50 retail, but everybody was making their own kind of version of them. So this is mine. It is just a pillow from Walmart that I actually use for stuffing other projects. And it, so I had already used about half of the stuffing from the pillow. So I took the rest of the stuffing and pushed it into one of the corners, gathered the excess fabric at the bottom and then took a rubber band to close it off and then cut off the excess fabric below the rubber band. All right, so here is the inside body bones, if ghosts have bones, I don't think they do, but this is gonna be the shell of our ghost. And now we need to make his clothes, I guess. So this is a blanket, a Sherpa blanket that I got from Amazon that I used for a prior project, kept the excess perfect fuzzy material for this ghost. So I just laid it over the top of the ghost and created a triangle and then folded that in half and then cut out along the lines of the triangle. So that way when I opened it up, I had a square shape that is going to go over and fit over our pillow. All right, so now that we have our blanket for our ghost, we do need to seam up the edges. You can take it to your sewing machine and sew them up if that's easier for you. I am a hot glue gun girl, so I'm just using that along the edges, folding them over so we have a nice finished edge. Then we're going to lay our blanket over the pillow and center it so it looks nice before we add some eyeballs. I'm just using some HTV that I am going to iron onto the fabric, but you could use fabric paint here. You could use some felt here and glue them on. The HTV was just easy to cut out some ovals with my Cricut machine, weed it out, and then just iron it right to the front of the blanket.
All right, so now we have some cute little oval eyeballs for our ghost. We're gonna take this back over, put it on top of our pillow, center it really nicely, and use some hot glue to attach it so it stays in place. The original was holding an orange pumpkin and Dollar Tree has these pumpkins and they actually come in orange, but they were all sold out at my store. So we're gonna paint this white one orange instead. So taking some painter's tape here and taping off the stem and then using some fabric paint, some orange fabric paint and toning it down a little bit, adding a little bit of black paint to it to give us a warmer tone of orange and then using a paintbrush to paint the fabric of this pumpkin. Here is our pumpkin after it's dried. We're gonna make this little ghost look like he is holding it. So adding some hot glue onto the back and the sides and then pulling the fabric up around it. And that will actually hold it for us and look like he has little hands holding the pumpkin. So this was a super affordable way to create this ghost pumpkin at a fraction of the cost. So the original was $85.50. My pillow only cost $15 to make. I love fun wreaths and I wanted to re try to recreate this one that was $59 retail, but at Dollar Tree in the plus section, they had these straw wreaths for only $3. So grabbed out my black matte spray paint and we are going to give this a couple coats of spray paint to turn it black. All right, so we have our wreath dried now. We need to add the little ghost that hangs in the center. So grab a styrofoam ball from Dollar Tree and some white fabric. We are gonna cover that ball and then cut off the excess at the bottom to make our ghost shape. Make sure you cut it down to size so it's not hanging too low. And then I'm using my iron-on or my heat transfer material to make the eyeballs for this one again too. Um, but again, you can use paint, you can use felt, whatever works for you to make some eyeballs, probably be easy, just as easy to use some fabric paint. I love working with HTV though, and this is such a fun and easy way to do it. So I just put my heat transfer vinyl through the Cricut machine, two simple oval shapes, weeded it out, cut them apart, and then we are going to iron out the fabric, place our eyeballs onto the fabric, and we are gonna do 350 degrees for 30 seconds each, remove the plastic, and then repeat for the second eyeball. You can also flip your fabric upside down and heat press the other side to make sure it pulls in the adhesive and it's permanent. So now that we have our ghosty, we're gonna take some of that fishing line and a needle and feed it through the fabric and the styrofoam ball and hang that from the top center of the wreath. This is a pretty quick DIY and to recreate the original version, we saved a ton of money. The original was $59. To make it yourself, it only cost $7. So you know I was not gonna do fall and Halloween without doing Christmas too. I love all of these projects. First one, all you need is a gold piece of poster board from Dollar Tree. We're gonna recreate these bells that retail for $14.50. Still a good deal, I feel like, for a Christmas decorative piece. But we are gonna cut a strip of our poster board down. Um, depending on what size bells you want, make it whatever size you want. I actually ended up making several different sizes. So just cut strips and we're gonna turn these into little cones. These are gonna be two inch size strips. You just kind of roll them up, add a little bit of hot glue to one side, put the end of your poster board into the glue, let it sit so it can finish drying and hardening up. And then we're gonna cut off the bottom and we're also gonna cut off the excess on the side. Mm -hmm. 
So pretty easy peasy. Here's our first bell. I actually made several different sizes, but just to repeat this process again for you, you're gonna roll up your strip of poster board into a cone shape, hot glue the side, and then cut off the excess on the end and on the bottom. So you're gonna make several in different sizes. These are all four inch, three inch, and two inch size strips rolled into cones. And then we can start putting this together. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our scissors and cut a small piece of the top point off, revealing a hole, and then take some cording and run it from the bottom up through the hole. A little barbecue skewer helps to push that end through the hole. We don't want too big of a hole, so kind of smoosh it up in there, pull it out, and then you're gonna tie a knot in the tail and we're gonna pull that tight so it hangs from the inside and we have a tail coming out the top. Go ahead and repeat that process for the rest of your bills. Now to put these together, we are gonna start with the larger size bells, hanging them at different heights, come in with the medium size ones and then fill in the gaps with the smaller ones with all of the tails coming together at the top. I didn't have enough room on the tails to just tie a knot, which would have been the easy thing. So instead I took some wire and wired all the tails together first and that made it easy for these to all be gathered and hung in those varying heights. To finish this off, I had some thicker gold uh, cording that I ran a loop over the top, and then we're gonna hot glue that on and finish it off with some more of that cording to give it a finished look. So here's a look at the original $14.50. Ours only cost about $3.50 to recreate. That includes the poster board and the cording. Next, we're gonna recreate these berry wreaths from Pottery Barn, $39.50 for the smaller sized one retail. Grab a bunch of these berry stems from Dollar Tree and then start cutting off the stems and hot gluing them around a Dollar Tree wreath. I also like to find wreaths of the thrift store, it's still super affordable. They usually have wreaths there every single time I go. So I'll grab a couple in different sizes. Pretty sure this one is a thrift store wreath, which was only like a dollar i'm pretty sure and then i'm just adding the berry picks all the way around it make sure to cover the inside edge the outside edge and go all the way around the front center The Pottery Barn wreaths also had some fairy lights in them. So luckily that's something you get from Dollar Tree too, or I highly recommend these that you can get from Amazon. They are pretty much the same price, but you get them in a bundle and they are longer too. And I really like that the battery packs are super thin. They use a watch battery versus two AA batteries that you would have to use with the Dollar Tree ones. So just, wound that all the way around the wreath instead of almost $40. Ours retail was only $7.50. I'll make sure to link those fairy lights down in the description box below for you. We always do a Christmas tree in our bedroom and I really love this snowman tree topper, but at $59, there was no way. So I grabbed one of these tree cones at Dollar Tree along with 
a chamois that was white and then headed to Hobby Lobby and grabbed this yarn for $5.59, which was 40% off their original price of $7.99. You want this big, thick, white yarn. And we're gonna start by taking that cone and then removing all of the tinsel garland off of it. And that's gonna give us the frame for our snowman. Next up, we are gonna take our white microfiber towel shimmy, and we're gonna use that to cover the cone. So this towel is actually going to give us some bulk. So our belly and the head of the snowman have some thickness versus having to use a ton of the yarn to get that look. So we are going to fold that up and wrap it around the bottom half first. Actually came in and just kind of rolled it and then glued it around the center and tied it on so it would stay. Now to add our yarn, we're just gonna take a bunch of it and start wrapping it around, making the belly of the snowman. Next for the head of the snowman, we're using that chamois again and we are adding it to the top here and using some string to tie it on and keep it in place. Then we're gonna start wrapping again with the yarn to give the head of our uh, snowman more of a finished look. It also helps to use some hot glue to help hold it all down. Here is the body of our snowman. We can start embellishing him. So I have this hat. You can find these at Hobby Lobby. They're $1.47, so really, really affordable. We're gonna use that obviously for the hat and hot glue that onto the top of his head. Then we're gonna use some buttons for his eyes and for his mouth. I ended up changing my mind here and adding a orange pipe cleaner for his nose, just twisted it into a triangle shape and glued that to the center. And then put little tiny black buttons for his smile and also a couple for his buttons on his belly and then use some scrap fabric for a scarf. I felt like his hat needed a little something too. So these are little Dollar Tree picks and pine cones that I found in their floral section. Glued those on and instead of paying $59 for the Pottery Barn one, I was able to make my own for only $9. You can also see our Pottery Barn wreath over there on the left on our wardrobe. So this all became some great bedroom decor for us that we were able to create on a budget. I loved these berry topiaries that Pottery Barn had, but for $99, I knew Dollar Tree had styrofoam cones and they also have those berry picks. So we're gonna try to recreate our own for much less. So grabbing some of this velvet red ribbon, we're gonna cover our cone just so it is all red underneath and kind of hide some of the 
uh, holes that might happen as we add those berries. So we're gonna start at the top, add the uh, ribbon onto the top first and kind of use some hot glue to put it all down and cover it up. It also helps to cut off the wire if your ribbon has any of that so it will kind of conform to the shape of the cone. We're going to wrap the rest of it up using some hot glue, cutting off the end, and then just making sure to cover the whole thing before we start adding the berries. Now for those Dollar Tree berry picks, we're just gonna pick them right off of the stems. We don't need the greenery part or the stem. We just need the berries, obviously. And then take some scissors or some wire cutters and trim off the extra stem that is at the bottom. A tip here is to take your berries and kind of pop them open so we can reveal the stem on one side, which will give us a flat spot to add some hot glue to and attach onto the cone. For mine, I added some hot glue to the top of the cone first and covered that and worked from the top to the bottom. So here is the first cone covered with those berries and the bottom of the originals look like little terracotta pots. So we are going to take these outside, spray paint them black so that they also match the Pottery Barn originals. Then all we have to do is take some hot glue and attach the cones onto the bottom. And of course the price comparison from $99 to $179 for a pretty tall one. We were able to make two for the price of only $18 for a set. My son was wanting a nativity for his bedroom. We needed a smaller sized one. So I thought, let's recreate this one that was $149 at Pottery Barn using some Dollar Tree supplies. So this house shape chipboard shape from Dollar Tree along with some of their wood planks. We're gonna cut the top of this house off. You can use a razor blade or I love these 10 snips. You get them for five bucks at Walmart. They cut through chipboard like this, super easy. And once we get that all finished up, we are gonna take a piece of sandpaper and sand off the edges so they're nice and smooth. And then we need to make the kind of stable or the manger with those wood planks. So I measured out the sides, cut those down to size, and also use some sandpaper to sand those smooth. And then next up was the roof, just measuring, cutting down to size, and then we'll have two sides and two pieces for the roof that we are going to hot glue together. Before we glue this together, we are gonna paint it and paint all the pieces first. I always find that this is so much easier and you're gonna get a nicer finish if you paint first before assembling. I do this even with my wood projects and wood stain to get a really nice finish. It's also so much easier too because you don't have to like try to get into corners and then you kind of get an unfinished look that way. Um, so paint, stain first, then assemble, or at least that's what I do. So once that paint was dry, we're gonna come in with some hot glue and glue this all together. Another tip is to take your hot glue and run it along those seams once it's together to even more reinforce it. 
Now for the nativity pieces, I was fortunate enough to find this nativity set for only $3 at the thrift store, all these little pieces, but you can also find them at Hobby Lobby during Christmas time. This set is only $4.99, so a great price point on those when they're on sale. We are going to paint these whites. We're doing a smaller scaled one. I'm just doing Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. So they would fit inside of the nativity, but you could do all pieces and make a bigger nativity if you wanted to. Still a great price at only $3.50 to recreate the Pottery Barn one. These were all the rage this Christmas too. The original ones were $149, but you can find some great wood nutcrackers at the craft store and a Dollar Tree. And I actually had one from Hobby Lobby from years ago that we're gonna take apart. So we get a nice set of three. So one was 50% off at Hobby Lobby for $5. The other, the smallest one was $3 from the Dollar Tree Plus section. And this is sort of an experiment. I hadn't done this before, so we're gonna do this together. We're gonna take these outside and we're actually gonna add some lacquer Krylon spray as the first coat of these first. And we are going to actually leave it wet before we come in with our brass spray paint. So we're working one nutcracker at a time. So lacquer coat first, while it's wet, we're gonna come in next with the next color spray paint. Next is our brass or our gold finished spray paint. I will definitely link what I use down in the description box below for you. So like I said, we wanted that lacquer spray paint wet and we're coming in with that gold spray paint. And what it's going to do, it's kind of going to start separating. So it's going to make it look more antique versus brand new shiny gold color, which is more of the look we're wanting. So this was a fun process and a really easy one too. The original again was $149. Ours, mine was a set of three for only $20 and it still gives you a really pretty classy and high-end look and finish in the end. So I had to do the math. Retail, if you bought every single item that I showed you today, it would be $4,488.50. But DIYing it, it only cost $423.50, which is a 90% savings. And I think that's a good enough reason why you should DIY versus buy. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know which project was your favorite down in the comments below. Subscribe if you are new and I'll have another budget-friendly DIY video popping up on your screen. Go ahead and click over and I will see you over there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a creative day.